In this video, I'm gonna give you 10 reasons why you never use an elastomeric on a flat roof. Most manufacturers, despite what most manufacturers will tell you, in my experience as an applicator in this business for many years now, it just doesn't work. And there's many reasons why. And we, we're gonna start breaking down those reasons and why they don't work. And what goes, what can and usually goes wrong with them. And reason number one is, uh, specifically on acrylics, they're water-based. So if you have a water-based product and you're putting it on a flat roof, it doesn't withhold ponding water. And there's people that will say, oh, hey, and I've seen this a lot of times. Well, hey, we, you know, we coated a, a box with an acrylic and we set it inside, you know, we have it in our office and we've had water standing in there for an X amount of time, maybe even a year. Well, the difference there is you're not getting sun, you're not getting rain, you're not getting the elements outside. So it's, it's not apples to apple comparison to what your roof is experiencing. Like start walking in that box every day and seeing how, la how long that's gonna last. So the, the whole idea that you can just put an acrylic in a box and it withholds water for a while doesn't apply to roofs. In my experience, again, acrylics need a slope. So if you're gonna do an acrylic on a metal roof, it's a whole different ball game. It needs a place for the water to go, to drain off and to get off of the acrylic. When you think of an acrylic, again, anytime the water is stopping on it, now it's gonna build up and you're gonna get dirt and then that eventually starts breaking down and just creating cracks in the acrylic. This is a big thing because you can even have a big flat roof and it's doing semi well but whenever you go look at your drains what happens is you get a lot of water in your drains your drains overfill and it starts to fill up a bit now you have water sitting on the edge of that acrylic so wherever your acrylic stop it starts eating away there and then it starts seeping in back underneath loosening the acrylic and therefore now you now most of the system is eventually going to fill with that especially if you're thinking a 10-year period say you have a 10-year uh warranty on it and so you just have no chance at getting those 10 years out of that in my experience reason number four when you think about acrylics oftentimes to get your elongation the way you want it and the way you need it you have to use fabrics over the seams can be an example or sometimes a full fabric over the entire roof here's the problem with that when you have an acrylic again because it's water-based it has to completely dry so when you are applying it, even in the heat of the summer, let's say you put a fabric in there, you have a layer of acrylics, you have your fabric, have another layer of acrylics, that takes a lot of time for that to cure completely. Now, if it's not cured completely, which nine times out of 10, it will not be, by the time the sun goes down and you get dew on there, now, because it's permeable, you're gonna get water in there and it's never gonna fully cure and therefore you lose your adhesion. Reason number six, if you simply do an acrylic without fabric on say an EPDM roof, it will bleed through even if you just do a fabric over your seams. But now the rest of your EPDM roof, you only have say two gallons or even three gallons per square and you'll get the bleed through. So we've found that you have to have about three gallons per square on a black EPDM roof to get rid of the bleed through. And otherwise you're just gonna look at, it's just gonna turn brown and look terrible. Reason number seven, we're gonna talk about silicones. And this is another controversial topic where most manufacturers will swear by silicones on a flat roof and say they're perfect for it, this and that, and everything else. Here has been what we have discovered in, in our experience with silicones on a flat roof. Silicones will trap any kind of moisture. They're not as permeable as an acrylic. So therefore, if you have wet insulation or moisture in your roof, the silicones will trap it in there and it won't evaporate out as quick or anything. And then what happens is it breaks down the silicone from underneath and starts losing the adhesion. And then you get your silicone cracking or bubbling or ponding. And I've walked many roofs and have seen this where the customer was given even up to a 20 year warranty. And they're like, you know, why is my roof leaking at 10 different places? And you could walk the surface of the roof and the silicone looks great, but what's happening, it's breaking down from underneath and they're getting water in. And again, same problem with the drains. Your, your silicone edge by your drain will start breaking down and you get water in there and then it breaks it up from the bottom. Number nine, acrylic coatings again are permeable and will hold water. So the thicker your acrylic, the more water you'll hold. Think of it again, the same way a dew will penetrate it or a rain. The even, even let's just say your acrylic did cure out and now you have a ton of ponding water or a ton of rain and it's and it's the acrylic is absorbing it right and then it dries it out and spits it out 
but if you get too much water in, it's gonna get underneath and never completely dry out and then therefore it breaks it down again. If you look at, a, at an acrylic and wanna know how an acrylic is breaking down, you're gonna have a very kind of um, snakeskin finish on your acrylic. It's gonna be brown, it's gonna start peeling, chipping. That's what happens. And reason number 10 is something I hear a lot as well from manufacturers. Oh, foam it. You know, foam it in acrylic, put an acrylic on top and a base coat even, and your roof's gonna be great. And we'll give you a 10, 15, 20 year warranty. Never seems to work as well because now think about it this way. If, you, if your acrylic again is absorbing the water, it's permeable. Now you get it into the foam. Now your foam's never gonna completely cure out or you have a ponding water spot that's always sitting there holding it and that breaks down and then your foam just completely obliterates and then you don't have a roof left or like a, another roof I walked one time that was I believe 15 years old. I counted four trees growing out of it. Mice had homes in it, birds had nests in it. These are all just reasons why we have found that it's never a long-term solution to use an acrylic or a silicone over a flat roof. That's been my experience, despite again, what manufacturers may tell you, it's our job as contractors, I believe, to do the research and to go over and above what we're told by manufacturers, because at the end of the day, when that roof fills, the customer is gonna call you, not the manufacturer. And that's your business reputation on the line. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them below. I'm gonna read every one of them. We're gonna to respond to every one of them because, and if you have a story that doesn't align with mine and you have a different experience with these things, also leave that below and leave your testimony and your story of why you think I could be wrong in this. And I wanna have a conversation about it because I love to learn just like I know you guys like to learn and let's figure this thing out. But this has just been my experience with Elastomerics on flat roofs. I wanna say something here too, by the way. And by the way, for everyone watching, Dimitri has no idea what I'm about to say, but I will say this. Um, I, when, when we wanted to get into residential, and this is for anybody that's getting started, like I've done commercial, I know the game, I know how to get leads. I, I don't have any issues on commercial besides finding more help. The, um, but when we wanted to get into residential, I had no idea where to start. And the, I just started Googling stuff. I'd never heard of you before, before um, I just st went into residential. Started watching Roofing Insights. Um, everything I know about residential today is because of this man. And so then I was like, and this is just a plug for you, because then I still was like, okay, what? I, I remember the first call I made with you. It was like, I booked it, it was like a hundred bucks. The, the best money ever spent. And we talked for 15 minutes, 20 minutes maybe. You gave me some good advice. And that's when I was like, you know what? I'm gonna hire this guy to come in. So the money that you're charging to come in and teach a company if anybody is not doing that, if, if you're trying to get started in the residential roofing and you're not hiring this guy, you're an idiot. I mean, dude, you could charge three times. I You came one day and saved me the money that I would that I gave you. And now you're here for two more days. So I'm just saying like, it's every, everything we know has been uh, on residential. And the reason we're successful in residential, I'm not too proud to say, Sure, we work hard and we've, we've implemented a lot of things and we're teachable in that regard, but we wouldn't have known how to do it without this man and Roofing Process Conference, so. Well, thank you, I didn't And he didn't pay it. me to say that. He didn't <laughs> even know I was gonna say that. So no. I'm just, but I'm, I'm dead serious. Like it's, it's if, somebody, if somebody's out there looking to learn residential, all you gotta do is, this man knows everything you gotta know. Wow, thank you. Well, we just landed here and I, like I have a video guy right there in the back, eager and we're going to his job site i just asked him for a testimonial for a roofing process conference he decided to say it but i'll take it you know because i i don't have a lot of testimonials if you want to book a call with me it's dimitrilipinski.com book a call we'll talk i don't do a lot of consulting deals this is not how i make my money but i love traveling i mean getting to know awesome people in this industry and seeing them growth and seeing them build their businesses it's very satisfying no money can buy it and this guy is going to be big. I want you to speak on um, ma um, direct mail and commercial, how you're getting those jobs, because many residential contractors need help from commercial contractors because he knows codings, he knows how to get the jobs. I mean, this job we're going right now is a $400,000 job. It's very unique. Many residential guys need to expand their services and get into commercials because you're tapped out. You've been doing it for too many years. Maybe you're a small market and doing four or five million in a residential. You're not gonna grow past that unless you actually 
offer more services. So if you feel like you're that guy, get into coatings, get into commercials, get into other services or open another location. There's no other way around. Thank you for the plug, man. Yeah, you're welcome.